Hi friends, it's Lauren here at Craft Some Joy and I am so excited to bring you another edition of Scrap With Me Times Three. Kylie Kingham at Paper Sweet Pea and I have partnered together this month to use the beautiful Vivid Melodies collection from Creative Memories. This collection is stunning. There are so many possibilities and so many options to mix and match these beautiful patterns and I can't wait to share what I've created with you. So when you're done here watching this video, make sure to hop on over to Kylie's YouTube channel at Paper Sweet Pea and check out the beautiful two-page spread she has in store for you as well. I will leave all her shopping, social, and her YouTube links right in the description of this video. And as always, if you are enjoying this series, please let us know. Leave a comment and we would love to hear what you have to say. Okay, so let's jump in with Vivid Melodies from Creative Memories. So for this layout, we are going to have some fun working with patterns, textures, layers, and color to create this really interesting, fun two-page spread. I'm also going to show you a fun little technique on how to create a pocket. So last time I shared how to create a little library pocket and this time I'm going to show you how to do kind of this really interesting cutaway pocket. This is using a peekaboo pocket as the base and that's a fun place to put in four by six photos, journaling, whatever you want, you can just tuck right in to this four by six pocket. We're also going to uh, talk a little bit about how to do this double sided border strip. And then just remember, because we are using a lot of color and texture and pattern that you can switch this layout up. So if you those that work better with the Vivid Melodies Blue collection or Yellow collection, you can do the same kind of layout with that collect those collections, and you're not just stuck to the pink and green that I've used here. So we're going to get into how to first make the base pages for this, then we'll add layers and layers uh, as we move along. Okay, so let's jump in and first talk about what you need to get started today. Okay, let's first start by talking about the tools we're going to need today. We're going to use the personal trimmer, the 12 inch trimmer with the straight blade. We're going to use our border maker system with two cartridges, the picket fence cartridge, and also the sunshine arches cartridge. We're also going to need a sharp pair of scissors your adhesive. We'll be using photo tape, regular uh, adhesive, and also repositionable adhesive. And in addition to those, I'm also going to have you get your favorite X-Acto knife and a ruler, a pencil, and a pad of post-its. If you want to do your journaling, you might want to grab a black pen as well. Okay, so that is our tool setup, and don't forget, we're always going to be able to find a place to use some <laughs> foam squares, and then let's talk a little bit about the materials that we'll be using today. As I mentioned, these collections, the Vivid Melodies collections, are stunning, So, and there's a lot of mix and match potential. So today what I'll do is share the papers that I pulled to make this two page spread and the embellishments. But as I said, just keep in mind you can mix and match to what works for you and your pages. So from the Lime Tart paper pack, I am going to be using three sheets of paper and it's this uh, two sheets actually of the green kind of polka dot with the floral print on it. I need two of those sheets and then just a small piece of this green light green grid with kind of the um, dandelion leaf blowing seeds background. I don't know what to call that. Anyhow, okay, so we need three sheets from the lime tart. We're also going to use some of the Jazzberry collection. And from this collection, we are going to need the red polka dot. We'll actually be using the 
which is this gorgeous little mini floral print and this pink grid paper with kind of the dots on the back. All right, so those are the papers that we'll be using to create our base page and some of the detail work. And then we're also going to need some embellishments. And you have, as I mentioned, there are so many choices from these gorgeous kits that go along with each of the collections that if something strikes your fancy, I say go for it and use it. But today, what I will be pulling are some of the uh, laser words, some of the floral clusters and the little word banners and the little hashtags. So all of those little pieces work really well together to kind of create interest along your page. And also, um, we are going to use this epoxy sticker if you did happen to buy the bundle with all four paper packs then you do get this pack free and so this together epoxy sticker actually came out of the bonus sticker pack okay so you can see i have different places i've used different uh, pieces of the collections and then last but not least right here is kind of this fun pocket that i designed and part of this pocket are these two cards that slip right in and kind of make this fun interactive element. So what I used for my pockets are some four by six journal cards. And I will have these up on my website shortly if you are interested in uh, downloading them. And if you are part of my Pop Live Crop uh, membership, you got the download for these cards for free and they are in the member area in the pop live. So um, that is what I'll be using for those cards, but any four by six journal card will work if you want to use your own. Okay, so I think that is it. Let's get started and jump in to how to create the base pages and then all of the layers. Okay, and I also did forget to mention you'll need one more item, which is a horizontal format peekaboo pocket. So just to grab one of those from your stash of peekaboo pockets and set that aside and we'll be working with that. Okay, so let's get started first with our base page. And we are going to, you'll, you'll need either actual pages to do your base page layout or a couple sheets of white cardstock, which is what I'll be using here. And uh, if you wanna work directly in your album, feel free to do that. Okay, so the first paper we're going to cut is our green dotted paper with the floral print on the background. And for this paper, we are going to take and cut this at the five inch mark. So we're just going to cut a one cut straight down at five inches. And we're going to set that aside. And then our next paper we're going to cut is our pink kind of uh, grid paper. And this paper we are going to make a few cuts. So the first cut is going to be at two inches. So we're going to make one two inch cut and just set that aside over here for now. And then we're going to also make a one inch cut. Okay, just line that up. Make sure you're straight with your trimmer on the one inch cut. Again, set that aside. And then now what we're going to do, I'm actually going to pull the paper over to this side and we are going to make uh, a cut that is just about a 5 8 inch cut. So basically what I want you to do is just line up your paper on this first uh, grid on the right hand side, just in the middle of that. Okay, so that's gonna be right in the center and we need two strips cut at 5 8 inches. Okay, so there's one and these can get set aside over here and one more, so just in the middle of that grid. Okay, 
And the rest of the paper is extra, so you can set that aside. And then for these two strips that we cut, now I want you to take those, turn them horizontally, and we are going to cut these also at five inches. Okay, so cut here and set those aside. And now we're going to take this strip and cut that at five inches as well. Okay, so we are getting there, getting our base page set up. The next piece we're going to cut is our... Um, floral print. And for this one, we are going to cut a three inch strip off of one side. It doesn't matter which side. We're going to just take that and cut that three inch strip off. And this is extra. We may come back and use this if you want to use it to decorate your journal card, but otherwise it is extra. And then we're going to take this paper and once again, we're going to turn at five inches horizontally and we're going to cut a strip at five inches here and then this one will be seven inches what we have left over. Okay our last cut with the trimmer is we need a four by six uh, rectangle out of this green grid paper. So I'm just going to cut a four inch strip first just like this. The paper is extra. Turn and I'm going to cut a six inch strip out from here. Okay so now I just have a four by six rectangle for that and the other one is extra as well. Okay this last sheet of paper we're actually going to use with our border maker system. So now that we're done with this cutting, I'm going to set my 12 inch trimmer aside and go ahead and grab my border maker system. So this one, we're going to put out the tray, grab our paper. And again, the pattern is, uh, there's not a particular order to the pattern. So we can just put the paper in whichever direction you like. So we're going to take this and we're going to start with the Sunshine Arches Border Cartridge. This is such a pretty cartridge. Love how it punches. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch this strip on this side. Now, while I have that cartridge in the housing unit, I'm just going to flip my paper around and go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so we're gonna come over here, pop this down, and we're gonna do the same thing. So just edge this with the Sunshine Arches border cartridge. And one more. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have both of those edges done. So we're going to grab our 12 inch trimmer one more time and come back. And now we're going to cut these punched strips off at two and a half inches. Okay. So I'm lining the very top of the arch that was punched at two and a half inches on my trimmer. Okay, so we're just going to cut that side off and we're going to flip it around and do the same thing. So we're going to cut two and a half inches off on this side. Okay, now this is also up for grabs. If you prefer, I'm going to show you my page, if you prefer a little less white between the two punches, you would just narrow that down. You could go down to two inches when you make your cut or even two and a quarter inches and you would have less of this border in between the two punches. But I kind of liked a little significance there just to be able to see this really pretty pattern. So we're just playing again with all these beautiful layers and patterns. So now what I'm going to do is grab my border maker system. And if you've never done two different border maker cartridges together, it's really fun. So I'm actually going to take my strip that I have the one side already punched on and put that in my tray. 
And you'll notice that there is a little bit to hold on to, but just for extra security, I'm just gonna take a post-it note and make sure that I'm just gonna have that stuck down to my housing unit before I put the arm down, okay? Now I'm going to switch over and use the picket fence border cartridge and we're just going to go down the opposite side and make those punches. So straight down just like that. Okay so now you can see that we have a double-sided border strip with two different punches but it just gets prettier and prettier because we are going to use that picket fence and lace that pink strip through there. So just kind of having some fun. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with this strip. Add it in, make sure we stick the post-it note down, hold that in place, and go ahead and punch the other side. And ta-da, we are done. So I know some folks like to save these itty bitty little tiny strips that come out when you're all done. Okay, so now we have our two beautiful border strips. We are done with the border maker system. Okay, so now we're getting ready to actually create our base page so that then we can kind of keep layering and doing some fun things on top. So what we want to do first is add the largest green strip over here to the right hand side and we are going to add the smaller green strip over here to the left hand side. Okay, then in between those come all this fun. So we are going to, let's set those border strips aside and the skinny strips for now and we are going to layer in our other pieces that we've cut and we're going to hang on to that rectangle for just a minute so these pieces go just like this and you can see it's just like a puzzle getting it all in where the extra spaces are okay so that's our base page I'm going to go ahead and adhere everything down and then come right back and we'll do the next step. Okay, so our next step is to have a little fun with these border strips and we're going to use pinks and just weave them through the picket fence punched side of our border. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes now and do that and just going back and forth with our paper through those different slots, just like a ribbon. So now we have both of our ribbons woven through the border strips and these strips are going to just cover this seam right here on our page. So you can go ahead and I would suggest using your repositionable adhesive, add some of that down and just set that right in place. Okay, just so that it covers the seam just with that ribbon and the same on this side okay got a little adhesive there all right and we're just going to add that right down and the fun part i liked about this little bit of detail is i feel like it kind of brought that dark pink color uh, back through, I 
can't get this straight. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this straight. There we go. Um, this dark pink color back around to create a really fun frame around the entire uh, page. Okay, so that is your base page. And I want you to take a good look at that because as I said, you could take this and switch up the colors, switch up the patterns, use a different color out here and kind of take, you know where the same colors go and then just switch it with different patterns. That's what the beauty of this uh, collection is. So it's, I'm kind of giving you this formula that can use over and over again. I am going to take you through the process on how I created this little uh, peekaboo. So what you're going to do is actually have a piece of paper and then get that die cut that um, works for you, works for your layout. So you can see any of these would work beautifully with the four by six layout. You could do life, you could do love, you could do you and me, whatever works. And remember, you could always switch out the paper if you wanted a different look to the paper for your layout. Okay, so for this collection, as I mentioned, I used the life and uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the pictures I have on my layout in a minute, but I just kind of wanted to first share how this was gonna go on. Okay, so to make this fun little pocket, what I'm going to do is first kind of decide where I want all of my little embellishments to go. And I decided I love the little pink daisy, everyday moments, this leaf. And I did decide to put the daisy up on a foam square. And I'm just gonna leave that with the backing on for now. And then place the life uh, cut, die cut right in here, just where I want it to be. And I did add just a touch of repositional adhesive to the life die cut. And now what I'm gonna do is just take my pencil and just very lightly outline just the outside of this word with my pencil. Okay, and this one's a pretty easy one to outline. It's not as detailed. Something like the you and me, that would take a little more time, of course, if you're working on that one. But this part is just a little extra. And by all means, you do not have to even do this part. If you like the cluster and the pocket just like that without the see-through, then you don't even have to do this part. But if you want to go that little extra bit, like sometimes I like to do on my pages, um, then you can just follow along this. So this is where we're going to need our uh, X-Acto knife and a ruler. And sometimes I like to use a ruler with a little metal blade if I'm using a knife. Uh, the clear rulers are also nice, but sometimes um, I, I catch those with my X-Acto. So what I'm gonna do is just start working on this card, but I'm not going to cut on this line. I'm going to cut just a little bit inside of this line. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can get a closer look. Okay, so I'm going to start and sometimes what I like to do is make all of the cuts going the same direction first. And the main thing is just to come right inside those pencil lines. Okay, so we've got those cuts. I need to make some of these here. I've got my little life over here, I'm gonna move it. And then I've got another line coming down this way and another line coming here. And the E is actually, if you'll notice, it's a little three different little lengths. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep continuing to cut this all out. 
and then when I'm almost done, I'll come back with you. Okay, so you can see I've just about cut through. There's a few places I missed, and I actually forgot to cut this piece across here, so I'm just gonna come back in and cut that out as well. But if you look closely now, you can kind of see I have the inside of that pencil line cut away. And if you need to come back in and just make sure some of those cuts go all the way through, it's not a big deal. They do not have to be perfectly straight. Okay, and you'll see why in just a second when I get this guy loose. There we go. Okay, so now I have the inside of the life cut away. At this point, um, you will probably wanna take your pencil and just erase those pencil lines just to keep it nice and clean without any kind of a shadow line on there. And now once you have that cleaned up, just go ahead and add a little more repositionable adhesive to the outside of your life. And if you get it on the inside, that's fine too. It's just going to stick to your peekaboo pocket. Okay. And now you can set that right back in place and you have created a see-through to that die cut. So fun. So now I can actually take and add my flower back in. Since I did that hard cutting part, I've got that up on a foam square. And the next part then is we're going to add it to the peekaboo pocket. But before we do, I want you to grab your sharp pair of scissors and we are going to just modify this a little bit so that it works really well for us. So what I'm gonna do is actually just cut this little edge off of the pocket and I'm gonna cut it just like a triangle. I'm just gonna come down and cut right down to that edge. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just kind of making it almost like an envelope. It's, I know it's kind of tricky to see, but I just angled those edges off. So now we are going to have our peekaboo pocket and we're going to slip this decorated piece in with the flap at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna do that. You can see here's my flap and I'm just gonna slide that into my pocket just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is take off the strip for where the adhesive is. And this is why you'll be so thankful that we cut those little corners. And now we're gonna flip it over and tuck that flap inside. Okay, so it just goes right inside, just like that, okay? And I'm gonna get that nice and flat. And once it's flat, just seal that pocket up. So in essence, what we've done is just taken that peekaboo pocket and made it a, 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 just a little sealed envelope, a little sealed plastic envelope, okay? So that adhesive is tucked inside on the back. And that means when I slide something in, nothing's gonna get caught. It's just gonna be a nice backing to the pocket. So how are we going to put this on our page? There are a couple ways. If you have our um, extra strength adhesive, that would be one way you could add the pocket. But my favorite way was to use our photo tape. And I love that this is now part of our core product line. So what I'm gonna do is actually just take this and add a strip. It's a little forgetful we're working on plastic. Try to get that as close to the bottom as I can, and then just add that strip down and take my scissors and cut that side piece away. 
Now you'll notice that the backing to the photo tape, the photo tape doesn't go all side to side on the strip. So when you put your next piece down, just kind of remember that and you can do a little bit of an overlap if you need to. And then just go ahead and put that down on the side of your pocket. And then we're gonna trim that away. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the third side. And that's it, we're not gonna do any more. Just the three sides. Okay. And then just trim that away. So peekaboo pockets, I know there are just so, so many uses for these things, as well as just adding those extra photos to your page. Okay, so now we have the photo tape set up on the back side, and it doesn't really matter what this looks like. Also, I should just say, because your pocket's gonna be stuck to your page and nobody ever is gonna see it. So don't worry about the back side. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to take that adhesive backing strip off. Sometimes you have to kind of get it started there. And one last piece here. And so you can see it's on those three sides to my pocket. So now I'm just going to, going to take this and place it right down here in the bottom corner and set that in place. So you can already see how cute it looks like to see the green all the way through, but I love even then adding things into your pocket so that you can see those when they slide in and out as well. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about embellishments and also photos. So in order to bring some decoration over to the opposite side of this two page spread, I decided to go ahead and use some of these beautiful lasers in this corner. So I just took the green cutaway circles, some floral elements and this cute little tag that says loving our life together. And I used those as a little cluster down here in the bottom. I just want to kind of wrap up with how I decided to place photos down on the page and how I felt that they worked the best with this layout. So over here, I took three four by six photos and I cut them down to three and a half by five and a half. Okay, so these are each three and a half by five and a half inch photos. And then I took a single sheet of white cardstock, put them all on there, and then cut one large mat so that it gives a little bit of depth and dimension to those photos. I also had a couple smaller photos. These are three by threes that I thought worked really well right above this cluster. And then on this side, I took two four by four photos and did the same technique with the white cardstock put those on, matted those, and tucked those right in this area. And then last over here, there's room enough for another four by six photo, uh, or you could do a three and a half by five and a half and mat it on white cardstock. And then the pocket area gives you yet more space, either for yet another photograph or for journaling or for both. And you don't even have to stop it too. If you wanted to add more cards, you could tuck them right in. And as I mentioned, these are the four by six size cards that I used to uh, just, I used my printer to print these and they have different designs. And then I added a few more layers of decorations to the top and bottom of these cards just to give a little more detail. And then once you have that in place, you can tuck that in. Now this is another four by four card since these are four uh, inches wide, then a four by four fits perfectly right here on this card. And then once you're done with that, you can just slide those in and use your pocket to house those fun little extra details. 
you'll probably be wondering about page protectors. Yep, the page protector can slide right on. Those are open on the side. So if I did want to just kind of peek my hand in and pull that out, I could. But really, this is kind of just a little bit of technique and how to use something fun in your layout. And just remember, this kind of pocket you could do for uh, travel albums. You could use the same kind of cutaway technique and put brochures in here or travel tickets, airline tickets, um, movie passes, brochures from <laughs> museums you've gone to. So lots and lots of ideas uh, and possibilities on how you could just use this little four by six pocket right on your page. And as I mentioned, because we just used that peekaboo pocket, things slide in and out of here so nicely and so easily. So it's just a really fun little addition to your page. So I also did want to mention really quickly what this layout was all about. And this I have been really waiting to create for some time now. And I have this fun file of photos that is just called With Mom. And I have been, as I've been going through my photos, I've been pulling photographs of my kids with just me. And I, it's funny to think I do actually have quite a few in my little folder so far. But from over the years, I don't have that many photos. And so being able to pull those together into a two page spread and put this into an album that I can enjoy. I just love looking back across time and looking at all these different moments that I've had with each of my children, just me and mom, them and me. And so this is part of a series of pages that I'll do with those photos of just across time. There's no chronology to it. These are just photos that I'm in with my kids and enjoying the moment. Okay, so that is it. That's what I have for you for our Scrap With Me times three layout for the Vivid Melodies collection. I'm so glad you joined us today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment for us underneath the video and let us know that you enjoy when we collaborate and bring you these videos together. And we would love to hear what you think about it and as always, when you're done here, I'd love for you to hop on over to Kylie's channel at Paper Sweet Pea, and all of her social and shopping links will be in the description of this video, as well as Noreen. And we're hoping Noreen can join us for our next collaboration once she has things kind of settled. And if you haven't had a chance to hop by our websites, remember we have a free download with a notebook insert for you. So you can keep all of our handouts together all in one place. So you put some tabs in your notebook and then keep our layout guides and handouts just ready for you to use at a moment's notice. And those will be available on our websites for, uh, for a download. So until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. See you soon.